Hey guys, if we reach a thousand likes, we'll be giving out two of our new shirts. All you gotta do is click like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. What is up, guys? It is me, Faith of Illuminus, coming to you on a rainy recording session, listening some to some chill, lo-fi hip-hop. My favorite things to do is just sit back, relax, make a chill video for you guys. And this time, it is going to be another Steven Universe video. But anyways, this one is the top five things you didn't know about Steven Universe. Or you might have known. If, if you knew, if, you, if you're some sort of savant and you knew everything, let me know. If you didn't know something, then let me know that as well. By the way, a lot of these were taken by this site that should be on screen right now. Uh, so credit fully goes to whoever wrote this. Their links will be down in the description. I just found it really interesting, some of the stuff. I didn't use all of them. They have like 15 or 20. And I just picked the most interesting ones that I've heard before from other people. So I know that it's true at least. So it's it's kind of like a collaborative effort of the internet. Anyways, number five, Rose Quartz shapeshifted a womb in order to give birth to Steven. Okay, so we all know that gems are pretty much just hard light constructs. They're gems that manifest the light around them to create these physical bodies. Now, I don't even want to get into the theoretical science behind hard light uh, structures because <laughs> I, uh, I am a computer science major. I am not some sort of theoretical physicist, so I'm afraid that's way above my pay grade. But regardless, it seems that Rose was able to study human genetics enough to actually create a working womb. And this is how Stephen was conceived. This kind of brings up a lot of interesting points because this means gyms can essentially make themselves full human with everything that a biological human has. Downright to the processes. It's not just the mode of a human physiology, but it's actually the human physiology created by them that is some immense power now it's i don't think it's ever actually touched upon in the show but this is the canon reason of how greg had a child with rose number four the answer a steven universe episode was adapted into a children's book so this one completely shocked me like pretty much everything on this list except for the first one i didn't know that steven universe had children's books made out of their episodes and the answer is the one with Garnet's two counterparts, you know, Ruby and Sapphire, and all the stuff about them, which is weird. I'm not sure how the children's book plays out, but I'm assuming it's simply the episode retold in the format for kids to understand. Now, I'm not sure what the moral that they're trying to teach, because it's more of a complex one for adults, at least from the original episode. It can be told to kids, certainly, but would they really grasp it on the same level as us? So there is probably some writing changes, and whether it stays with the same exact layout as the episode or it's readapted to be fitting for younger audiences is something that I don't actually know. If any of you guys have seen this book in like Barnes & Nobles, if those are still a thing, or some sort of weird bookshop, let me know because I'm interested in seeing where these are. It was certainly a great episode and I'd love to get a physical copy of it. Number 3. Garnet and Pearl make a DC comic book appearance. DC has an immense universe with tons of different heroes. There are literally just dozens of different variations that have been considered canon just in separate universes of each of the heroes. And I guess in one of them, in one of the comics, they give a little cameo to Steven Universe, a show that's pretty much garnered critical acclaim across the board. It makes sense, you know, it's Garnet and Pearl in a bar scene, and they are definitely stylized, but you can tell it's them easily. Like, you just, just looking at it, even at a glance, you can see that, yeah, those are them. I'm not sure what comic it was in, or even what issue, but it's definitely a little, nice little nod from, you know, the originators of these kind of cartoon heroes, DC and Marvel. Yeah, they may not be huge anymore, as far as comics go, but... They're definitely still giants, and to be recognized by them, that's a pretty big deal. It also kind of makes me want to wish for a more adult-oriented uh, Steven Universe comic to come out, where they can even go further than what they've done now. That seems like it would be amazing, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys would read it. I know I definitely would read it. I would pay for that. <laughs> You know, that is something that I would love to have. In fact, I'd probably pay for physical copies of that book. 
That's how much I would probably enjoy it. Number two, Steven is based off of Rebecca Sugar's younger brother. So yes, yeah, Steven is an actual person in this world. Is he a crystal gem? Well, no, not really, but it is a person. Apparently Rebecca had a younger brother and she decided that he had such a good personality that he's going to be the star of one of the most popular shows on Cartoon Network. I don't know this guy personally, and I probably never will, but I can't imagine that uh, he was too disappointed when he heard the news about being one of the most popular cartoon characters to come out in recent times. That's probably a good little ego boost. Anytime you're upset, just remember, there are literally millions of kids who look up to you. And the number one spot goes to, there's a Stephen Universe comic book series. Remember when I said I wish there was a comic book series? Well, there is one. It's not as adult as I would like, but it's just like the MLP comic book series. It allows them to go more in depth into the lore and probably gets a little bit more darker than their normal rating would allow. I haven't actually read this. I never knew it existed. I've never heard anyone talk about it, and that's surprising. But apparently there is a comic book. Now whether or not it's physical, I don't really know. In fact, there's not as much info on it that I saw as I would like. You can apparently pick it up from Barnes & Nobles, usually for around $14, but right now it's on sale for about $10. Now, there's not a lot of open issues without pirating, but there's some panels and text that you can see that has it as a pretty different... It's got a different style from the show in a lot of these. It's a lot more cartoony but it's pretty good. As far as how in-depth it goes with the lore, I can't really say without actually reading it, but it looks like it does take a little bit more of a light-hearted approach and talks about the more slice-of-life aspect of Steven Universe. I could be wrong, but just judging from some of the covers and some of the panels that are free to see, that seems to be what it does. In fact, it seems to be more in line of the Sonic, it's one of the, as one of the Sonic comics than anything else. It even has that more old school feel to it. But hey, that's gonna do it for me, guys. If any of these things surprise you, let me know down below in the comments. Be sure to like, and if you enjoy the video like a super bunch, you can support us on Patreon. We kind of revamped it, so be sure to go ahead and check that out. I've been Faith and Malumnus. I thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Woo! Hey.